Cookie away here at Crescent Road, home of Braintree Town. Uh, it's a disappointing result for yourself, mate. One nil away from home. Talk us through that one, bud. Yeah, I thought we we actually played quite well. I thought we were really good first half. Um, create a few chances. Should have gone in one nil up at least. I think. Um, got to be a little bit more ruthless. There's a couple of chances that fell to to Anxie, to Geordie, and to um, to Alfie. Um, if we connect with one of those, then we're home and dry. You know, the the the, the frustrating thing is the goal, which we practice in training all the time, coming up for offside, and we leave one man in there, and um, you know they they score from our mistake really. So, yeah, not great, but in that respect, I thought we played quite well. I mean, so we'll start with the goal. Uh, there are obviously other moments in the game that we'll move on to, but the goal was you know, the trademark chipping them offside trap. We've seen it several times on free kicks so far this season. It's been executed to perfection every time. You know, the, the pessimists amongst us in the support of normally it's all oh, that's going to catch us one day, and you know, it has caught us today. Uh, we were miles away from it. Mike, you obviously get a slightly better view in from where you were sat in the dugout. Was it a mistake or was he was he offside? Because from where we were stood, it looked like Critchlow was about five yards off. Yeah, we, we just th- spoke to Minnow then. He didn't hear the shout for the second quarter because only about um, sort of 30 seconds before that they had a previous um, free kick which we did the same thing from the shout was the same we shouted across the line and he just didn't hear it so he, he stayed in there so he, he thinks he kept him on um, but uh, you know like I said it's worked all season <laughs> it's going to be one of those um, we, we've said like with Minnow there's no, no blame attached to him in the respect of he's been absolutely superb for us didn't hear the call and uh, you know we go one nil down because of that. So, but we've we've got to be better at the other end. I think you know if we're if we're conceding goals four, five, six every week and you're losing by a lot, then you'd say defensively you're poor. But actually, what it is is offensively we're not quite strong enough to go that sort of one goal up and then hold on to it and get your second. And that's where we need to be a little bit better as well. I think game itself today Mike was probably dictated by the man in the middle I know we don't tend to talk about referees too often but you know in the first 45 minutes it looked like the, uh, the brain tree mob were you know getting the pitchfork sharp and ready to take him out of Essex and you know, the first half the big contentious point for himself sending off their full back for a challenge on Mo Dabre I was right in front of it I personally felt it was a harsh red um, I thought you know there's definitely contact you've heard it the shin pad's gone and it probably made it sound a lot worse than it was but Following that, uh, booking over in the dugout for, for Maxwell, sending off of an assistant manager for the first 45 minutes. The referee, you know, for all intents and purposes, looked like he could be your best friend. And second half, it sort of seemed to get on the turn a little bit. And I don't know about you, but it felt very much like he was protecting them for that second 45 minutes. Yeah, yeah I'd agree with that as well. It's the same referee that we lost the goal to uh, Spencer Hamilton against Maidstone. So um, not a great referee I don't think but not um, not real any blame you know with him today because I don't think that was any fault of his for our, you know us not squeezing up properly from the free kick but um, I, I didn't think it was a sending off if that happens to us um, you, you know you'd be gutted if that happens to us I think today but um, you know we, we were making the most of it we were creating chances um, it wasn't like you know when we played against them at our place where we created very little we were definitely more on the ball today. We, you know, it, it's just getting that little bit of a release to score the goal, makes the team relax, and then you've got to go and get that second one, which we've got to be a bit more ruthless on as well. Some 18 chances today on the uh, on the stats, Mike, compared to their one. Um, you know, one? I think, I think it's. Uh, Unfortunately, I think you know, we've covered the ground there. Really, that you know, going forward, you know, we're not really sort of we're devoid a, a striker or a, a clinical finisher that can put the ball in the back of the net for us. You know, Geordie's doing a great job at the top. Alfie joining in with contributions, but you know, they're not they're not strikers. They're midfielders that are playing out of position. It seems to be a bit of a story of the season, Mike. You've had to sort of you know peg players in where they need to go in. And what chance have we now with ten games left? It's still not done. You know, there's still more than enough to play for. Have we got anything lined up that we could potentially look at and say, can we get that guy in over the line before the March yeah. deadline and yeah. hopefully get a striker in? Yeah, we have. Um, but the thing is, it's like when we were trying to get Mo in, it took four or five weeks. And that's that's the, you know, when there are other people's players, it's difficult to negotiate with the clubs. But we're going to keep going for that because we do need that. And uh, sometimes it's a little bit of an aerial threat. We've got Alex Bray playing up there alongside him. Ola wasn't fit today. Um, you know, Danny Griffiths come on, uh, did okay. Callum come on, did okay. I thought Noah, um, the young lad, 18-year-old, you know, between 
between Mo and Harrison. We've got sort of three 18-year-old lads on there today that have, have actually played really well. And um, we've just got to keep plugging away. You know, it's like I said to him in there, that's the longest that we've had to have a chat with them because it's three, three games on the trot where we haven't picked up what we needed to. Four games if, um, if you count well in, but we didn't create enough against well in. But the last three games, we have created enough to take the points away. So that's, that's what's frustrating. Yeah, I think I was asked the question earlier doing radio duties of, are we happy with the season so far? And I think, you know, if you look at the league table and you look at everything that goes with that and purely from a stats connotation, everyone at Chippenham would be happy with where we are. You know, we're 10th in the league, 10 games left. We're only four points off the playoffs. We're still looking almost like the destiny's in our hands, albeit against a slightly harder run. But I think I coined the phrase, you know, when you've surprised yourself a little bit and put yourself in the mix and... You know, losing game or losing games or say drawing games from winning positions, and today coming away and knowing full well that for the second 45 minutes, Braintree literally just got into a 10-man block, put everything behind yeah. the ball, no real attacking intent, no real threat coming forward for that second 45. As the manager, as the, you know, the man who ultimately is the the captain of the ship, so to speak, are you happy at the moment, Mike? Is this you know, where you kind of see yourself? around that sort of temp spot looking in or are you a little yeah, bit disappointed I mean, with how it sort of I think, in the last you know when we first come in it was it was trying to get a three year plan together first of all save the club from getting relegated which we did really well second season was a non-starter because of the Covid thing only 14 games and now we've come into this now so we've we've had roughly 50 60 games when normally after three years you'd be looking well over 100 games to do what we've done so we're, we're on the right tracks uh, it's just we we need that centre forward don't we Simon you know it's, easy, it's easy to say it um, and there's the, you know there'll be players that we're playing against next week for Dartford that are on 1500 quid a week and you know they could centre forwards we just have not got that in the budget you know thankfully to the board of directors we've managed to purchase Geordie which has been a great little signing for us but he needs a bit of help and um, you know we haven't quite got either that target man or the one who just gets that little toe punk into the net so I'm, I'm reasonably pleased but it's just the fact that I want to push on and I want to try and get into that playoff position as much as we can and we'll, we'll keep going until it's mathematically impossible that we can't do it but um, I think we've had a really good season um, don't think we've done great in the Cups and against the lower um, teams in our league I don't think we've done enough but the teams that have been generally in and around us and above us we've done really well so we haven't got to lose faith it's a couple of couple of results that we should have got um, it's not like we've lost the last five or six games it's not like we're doing the same thing as what Bath it must be horrendous supporting them at the moment because they're not winning anything and um, you know we, we look at ourselves we think you know for the budget that they've got and what we've got if, if it was flipped round the other way nobody would be saying anything um, and you know we're just a bit disappointed because we had such a good sort of uh, back end of January February that we've then come into this and, and it, you know we don't want to be letting ourselves down you know that's 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 the thing for us so we've just got to keep plugging away if we get a couple of good results over the next couple of weeks this will all be forgotten you know and um, you know we'll be in and around it so let's just keep going I think you know you've made a very good point there Mike that so far this season it's been almost impossible to get down the bookies and put anything on Chippenham you know they go lose lost to Welling lost to Hemel lost to lost to Braintree uh, but on the on the flip side of that, you know, we've gone up to Dartford, we've got a point up there, we've gone up to Mason and put in a solid performance, you know, we've taken Dorking apart 4-1 at home, we've beaten Haven't at home. Everyone who's the so-called big boys in the league is coming under the sword, really, when they play Chippenham, whether it be a draw or a, or a victory for us. And, you know, when people are turning around now looking at the looking at the run-in and saying, you know, of, of the 10 games that we've got left, at least six of those are going to be teams that are for... for lack of a better phrase better and bigger than we are mm. it surely you know we saw today with Braintree and the way that they're scrapping about going about points at the moment the celebrations at the end it was like they'd won the World Cup not picked up three <laughs> points over Chippenham but <laughs> we've now got seven cup finals out of ten games left to go and get ourselves the points that we need and relatively in a very tight league not many points required to get ourselves right back in there no and I think you know if you look at Braintree a couple of years I think they were in the conference so to be as pleased as they are with beating us today with that 1-0, you, you just think, well, you know, that, that's a lot of respect for us, isn't it? And, and what we've done really well this year is it's not a given, whoever we play against and they're, and they're playing against us. So, you know, for us personally, 
I just think it's uh, it's disappointing that we just don't want to let it slip. We want to hold on to what we've got. And this time of year, we've never been in this situation before. So we've just got to keep our nerve, keep believing and, uh, you know, keep the faith. That's what I would say. We're still looking up, Mike. You know, 40 points, 44 to get in there. Um, a win today, I believe, for Dartford against Dorking. That's who come down to us next week. We spoke at the start of the season when Dartford were coming down, uh, when we were going up to Dartford, and we were suggesting that would probably be one of our toughest games of the season. I think when we look at it, I think it was one of the big turning points for Chippenham, really, after the almost the, the poor form in the cup and the, the doom and gloom that sort of seemed to surround the place, and nobody gave us a chance at Dartford. We go up there, we get a very good three-all draw with two of their goals, really coming from a lack of concentration, which was really uncharacteristic at the back for us at the time. Three goals away from home against Dartford. They're probably not looking forward to playing you on Saturday. Well, I just think they're they're you know they're good opposition for us to play because they they'll come and have a go. They'll they'll be expected to pick up three points. They'll their biggest strength is pushing those fullbacks on and getting people in the box and joining in, and that's also their biggest weakness. Because if it breaks down and they're not on their game, then they will give you opportunities, <clears throat> which is what they did to us at their place. So, you know. We go there with good heart and we go there with a little bit of belief now and um, we we just got to make sure that everybody's at it and we're on it. Um, I think, you know, today we probably miss Will Richards a little bit for those sort of gaffs, last gas tackles that he does so well and heading it and kicking it away and clearing his lines. But in the main, you know, the defensively we've done well this season. It's just offensively we need to get uh, get the ball in the net, I think. Super. Well, Mike, we'll wrap it up here at Crescent Road today, my friend. We'll get back on the coaches and I'm sure no doubt dissect this one over and over and over again. And we will see you at the Thornbury Surface and Stadium on Saturday where we take on Dartford. For Great. Today, commiserations, but all the best for Saturday. See you on then, Mike. Good stuff. Top Cheers, man. Sam.